And welcome to the 39th episode of the Techno Buffalo Show. I am one of your two hosts for this week, Sean Ani, editor in chief of the site. And I am joined by Deputy Managing Editor Todd Hazelton. Hey, everybody. What was with those eyes, Todd? I was just making faces. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, a bit quieter this week than it has been, although there was still news. Mm-hmm. Uh, team, for those of you wondering why we're on Thursday instead of Wednesday, John Le- Leisure did not call us before he scheduled his T-Mobile event, you know, <laughs> to see if it conflicted with the Techno Buffalo show. We yes. forgive him, but you know. So T-Mobile had another one of its uncarrier events, and wow, who didn't almost go to sleep? Yeah, I know. When well, when we got there, and they were like. Well, I, I've been writing this, too, actually, in the posts. They said um, we're going to rework the industry or something. So the word work was like, okay, it's probably business-related. And then it was, for the most part. Um, and it was a little kind of sleepy for a bit. I mean, look, business is important, especially for wireless carriers when you get a big client on board and stuff like that. But I don't think it's necessary to have a consumer press conference and invite the consumer press. I mean, I don't write about small businesses, for the most part. Right. No, to I. This event. I, but, I uh, having been a small business owner, what he announced was exciting to that portion of me. But as working for a company that's consumer focused, it was kind of like, oh well. Right. And uh, for the people here, that missed the event, it's basically the uncarrier move was extended to business plans, so you can. Uh, Hey, it sounded like affordable prices. I don't even know what business prices are like, but it sounded like affordable prices for unlimited text um, minutes and starting at a gig of data, but you can add more. And then you can also bring in your family. So, like, if I have a Techno Buffalo T-Mobile account, I could then, like, add my wife and, like, non-existent kids. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting, the fact right. that they were willing to count the business phone as the first phone cutting out the $50 phone requirement. Right. I thought that was nice, too. And they said you could save up to, like, 50%. Yeah. If you're doing it through your business account, which is neat. No, I, I did have some caveats. I was thinking about this, and I've actually written about it a little bit. It's not that I'm against T-Mobile in any way, but I think if I was a business owner, we talked a bit about this yesterday, and I had a fleet of trucks or something, and, you know, I have employees out in the field, I want them on the best network possible. <laughs> and look, T-Mobile's network's fine in some areas, like especially metropolitan areas, but it does drop off the edge still, and they're working on that. But if I have a business, I'm willing to pay, I think, to make sure that everybody's connected all the time and that I know where everybody is. Otherwise, like, what good is or are my employees on the road if I can't reach them? So yeah. that's, to me, I'm not sure that price is good enough. But... T-Mobile's getting there. And they made promises that all of these deals they have, there's, like, no such thing as promotions almost anymore. Like, they're all permanent, and they're not going to change Unlimited for at least two years. So that stuff was really good. Yeah. No, there, there was some good stuff. There, there was some good stuff. I, I, the idea, you know, what I would love to see, and I know no one's ever going to do this, I, I've <laughs> had my own personal server for years for my personal website. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I constantly get these emails from my hosts about, you know, for new customers, 70% off for a month. <laughs> I've been with you guys for like four years. Right. You like me nothing. Yeah. <laughs> they should you know, do that, though. Exactly. And, you know, so, like, I look at, you know, the same situation with phone companies. Mm-hmm. They don't ever, you know, like, go, hey, you've been a loyal customer. Here's a special deal for you. Right. That yeah. should be like that. But, you know, they're always trying to get their the new customers on board. Well, hey, I've turned you into a loyalty point hoarder. Yeah, that's like right. Myself. Especially you know, on Delta. Exactly. You know, so here's a situation where we're earning all these loyalty points, and as you've already seen, it does pay off when you, yeah. you start to save them up. You know, maybe do a loyalty point system. Do something, you know, just... Don't sign us up and then go, ha ha, you're here for life. <laughs> Although I guess in the carrier sense, you know, the the older plans sort of have the unlimited data, um, you know, the grandfather plans. And, and that was nice of T-Mobile to at least confirm that they're not going anywhere for two years, which goes by quickly, it seems like. I mean, that's one phone cycle if you think about it, but for most people. Yeah. Not for I, us, it's like six phone cycles. But. 
I I don't know. It just it it seems unfair to me, but but the idea of the promotionals, the promotional price locking in now that I think is cool. Yeah, it is cool. So like I guess what they did was they gave the one gigabyte plan users two point five gigabytes, right. and now that that was going to go away at the end of the year. Now it's permanent, which is pretty yeah. Cool. I, I thought that was a, a nice move. Right. Hmm. You know, so, I don't know. It was interesting, but it, as uncarrier announcements go, it was okay. Right. Yeah, it wasn't as exciting. I mean, he was certainly energetic and, and as wild as ever, but, uh, yeah, I think the news wasn't as, you know, uncarrier as, as some of the other ones where you're like, whoa, like, that seems pretty cool. Oh, no, de- it definitely was not as uncarrier as some previous ones. Yeah. But anyway, moving along, so we are entering... Uh, it's great that all these phones have been announced. Now, if someone could just tell us when we can buy them. I know, it's really funny. We have, I mean, at least three big ones right on the horizon here. The M9, the Galaxy S6, and the Galaxy S6 Edge. Now, yesterday, they, the M9, we got an idea... Um, I was at T-Mobile most of the day, so I don't think I saw the specifics, but President uh, Jason McKenzie gave an idea of when that's shipping. But we still have no idea, aside from rumors that Samsung's devices are hitting on like April 10th or 11th, depending on where in the world you are, which is kind of weird. Usually, I mean, let's see, when the M8 was announced, I'm almost certain they gave a launch date almost immediately. And, you know, more and more were at these events, and they were like, okay, coming to like T-Mobile... AT&T, Verizon, you know, starting on, like, April 19th. But now, we're just like, when, when is this coming? What's going on? <laughs> um, but the Canadian press, it seems, has the units, so that means it's coming soon. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. It just it seems odd. I mean, if you've got the built-up momentum, although, I mean, it could be, and this is off the top of my head, this could potentially be a how can we hit the most news cycle. So we announce it, we go quiet for a little bit, then we announce the date, Mm -hmm. we get that bump, we go quiet, the phone actually launches. Go quiet, the QR launches, (laughs) you know. Yeah, exactly. So it it may be an attempt to get more press cycles. Right, yeah, that does make sense to me. I don't know. I think it's, it's also... This is a really big year for Samsung, I think. You know, they started from new, and so I think a lot of people are excited to see what these are like, you know, as daily drivers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just it seems odd, and, you know, now you kind of have to wonder, and this was something I was thinking about, and just so everyone knows, Todd and I actually did not get a chance to discuss topics very much before this show, so I'm... Flying we're by all over. By yeah, we're <laughs> all over. But I was just thinking about this. You know, okay, so we have three flagships coming right now. Mm-hmm. We've got the Xperia Z4 coming sometime in the year. You traditionally have the iPhones in the fall. You know, I'm wondering, is it better for the phone companies to spread it out and try to get away from each other, or is it better to clump together so there is competition... I yeah, think I know. Could, That's a really good hot. point. Because if you look at Mobile World Congress and stuff, too, it's like, it almost seems like, well, you're a nobody if you didn't make any news, right? Like, oh, what's going on? You know, but so when you look at, um, we had HTC and Samsung, let's say, right? M9, S6, S6 Edge. And then we're like, well, where's LG's, you know, G4? Where's the Xperia Z4? Where are all these other phones? And you start to think, like, are they not ready, or are they, what you're saying, strategically pushing it so that they're not launching at the same time as these devices, which makes sense. In other words, when they hit the market, consumers are going to be like, wow, there's three new phones to pick from, and they might pick, you know, one of them. Mm -hmm. But when they go shopping, say, let's say two months from now, the G4 is the newest phone, and it's the only new phone. Well, then maybe that has a better chance. And that's that seems to make sense. But it, uh, from a press perspective, it also looks like, well, gee, you know, why are they so quiet? Is something going on? And especially in Sony's case, because we know something's been an issue uh, in their mobile business, despite making great smartphones. Um, and now it sounds like that's going to be pushed maybe as far as September, which is a year after the, the Z3 uh, during EFA. So that, that'll be interesting to see. But they're going to a six-month cycle. 
Yeah, well, then now it sounds like they're going back to the annual one, which is yeah. which is very different. Because if if they were on six months, that's March, you know. They'd have to. Yeah. Have some, you know. I don't know. It just it, it crossed my mind. I wonder, you know, because yeah, for the consumer, it's better to have them all at once, and then you can make a more informed choice. Right. Yeah. You're like, sweet, I get to pick them. <laughs> exactly. But if it's spread out, it's better for those companies because then, well, even if it's a week, two weeks, they have the carrier stores to themselves. Right, exactly. They can, they can be the flagship, you know, the, the, what do they call it? The carrier's, like, flagship product. Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. all the Windows space. Well, yeah, it didn't exactly. work for the early Windows phones. <laughs> or the HTC, uh, what was it in the United States, the Cha-Cha-Cha? Oh, God. <laughs> One of the first Facebook phones. I try to forget the cha 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 happened, or the or the Kindle Fire, Fire Phone. <laughs> ah. Anyway, so moving on to some of the questions we have coming in, we have several about the Apple Watch. So let's jump into those real quick. Yeah. Uh, from Sean the Man thirty four, we have: Will you be going to on April tenth to the Apple Store to see the Apple Watch? Um, I don't know. We haven't discussed that actually yet because John has seen the Apple Watch in person extensively, mm-hmm. uh, the rest of us haven't. And for me, going to an Apple store means a three-hour drive. So <laughs> I probably won't be going to an Apple store. Um, right. I don't think I'm going to go out of the way either. I mean, it's it's there's a couple here in Manhattan, but I'm not going not gonna to kind of fight the crowds or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Eventually, I'll walk by and be like, oh, yeah, check that out. But, Todd, you can make an appointment. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. Let me be honest. I'm afraid I'm going to walk out with one. <laughs> so I can't just walk in there and, and see it. I mean, when I – Sean knows we're, we're about to get a puppy, and we were looking at dogs, and I swear I almost picked up the first dog I saw. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, and, and the other thing is that Todd would buy an Apple Watch, then return it. Yep. Yeah. Then buy it, buy it again. then return it, then, return it. then buy it, <laughs> and never use it. That's the story of my iPad Mini, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a story that we're never going to let Todd live down. Yeah, I think it's uh, my third <laughs> iPad Mini. I would imagine by now Best Buy has you on like some bulletin board in the back. If you see this man... <laughs> <laughs> don't let him return anything well, exactly you know, it's true uh, and, and I bought a new monitor this weekend it's actually a TV because they're they're a lot cheaper but they're not as sharp um, and I bought it and I brought it home and I put it on my desk and I was like this is cool but it was 720p because I saved 10 bucks and I was like but for 10 bucks I could have 1080p <laughs> so I returned it and got the 1080p you didn't tell me that part Todd <laughs> Oh yeah, I did. So, Todd. master of returns and decision making. I mean, not oh, a good grief! <laughs> Car shopping with you must be a delight. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I haven't had to do that. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you. you know, televisions aren't as sharp, but I mean, sometimes I I cast over to a television uh, mm-hmm. you know, during like Apple event days, and I so I just like put the traffic monitoring over there. Which doesn't need to be right. super sharp, but yes, TVs do make wonderful monitors. Uh, Not the price. And here's another question for Sean the Man 34 about the Apple Watch. Do you think we will need to pre-order the Apple Watch on April 10th morning? And if we don't, they will be back-ordered for months. That's a good question. Well, it's a really good question. It's really interesting because... If you pre-order and you get it, that's great, you know, awesome. But then you have to wonder, well, is it not that successful? But if, because uh, rumors say Apple has, what, like 3 million watches on order or something like that? And 3 now it's million is the number. Yeah, so 3 million. If they sell out of those, that's by far the most successful Apple Watch. Because you're looking at what, all Android Wear combined, last we heard, they'd sold like 760,000 units. Right. And Pebble just hit a million after however many years on the market. So, for Apple to sell 3 million in the first, whatever, week, if you're pre-ordering, what is it, April 10th to the 24th, right? So, two weeks. Um, that would be insane. And good for Apple, you know, good for the business. Yeah. But I think you should be all right. Just Probably. based on, you know, industry trends, what people have bought in the past. 
Uh, from 94 Keegan, who is one of the people who helps out with the Techno Buffalo Minecraft server, which if you may not be aware, we do have a Minecraft server, which you can just enter the I in the IP minecraft.technobuffalo.com to get there. Anyway, Keegan asks, I've been looking into getting an Apple Watch Sport Space Gray, and I saw that it comes with two bands. Do I get to choose the colors, or do I only get to only get two black ones? I'm not 100% clear on that. It's um, it's the same color. They're just different sizes inside the box. Gotcha. Far, I mean, I went through the uh, the sizing, Apple's sizing guide, and that's what it said on that. So, kind of a bummer. Okay. Oh, fun with Apple watches. <laughs> uh, I know. See, that's the thing, though. I, I, I think it looks awesome. I'm excited for it. I just can't. The rubber is what really bothers me. Like, I don't want to spend $350 for rubber. Like, I get there's a computer on my wrist. But, like, spend the extra, like, put the other $20 in for, a, you know, something metal. I don't know. It's nuts. I, I but, but, of course, if you actually want metal, what's the starting price there? Like, 600 I think? It's ridiculous. Something like that. It's ridiculous. I just, I, I'm not even considering one. Yeah. Speaking of, Tag Heuer this morning announced, uh, well, it was afternoon in Switzerland where they announced it, but they announced the uh, Android Wear powered tag hewers coming. They worked with Google and Intel on that, which is interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, from Sasha Bahal, and this is a broad question, uh, what do you think Google has planned for I.O. 2015? I think they have things planned. <laughs> Lots of things. I don't know. Uh, today, on the site, I don't know if it's on the site yet, but Lenovo's CEO accidentally leaked the new Moto 360, or at least it looks like it. I, I think it's going up here in just a minute or two. It seems pretty plausible, so I wouldn't be surprised to see at least new Android Wear, hopefully an update on the platform. But, you know, it's been a year since Android Wear was announced there, so hopefully more on that front. Um, I'd like to see an update on Android Auto, with what's going on with that. And um, I think maybe we'll see you know a new Nexus or something, but it might be a little soon. I don't know. Who, who was it the other day? Pioneer that released the Android Auto? Yeah, but it doesn't have, like, the software yet. <laughs> and here's the, I think this entry price was, like, $800. Hi, we'd like you to spend some money on something that doesn't work yet. Yeah. It's like, what? Are you in? I wonder if Chrome OS will be discussed, too, because we just got the new Chromebooks um, were just announced, the new Pixel or whatever, which is crazy expensive still. So you kind of hope that like Google is going to explain why anybody would want to spend that money. But I get it. It's not for consumers. Yeah. It's still just a very expensive laptop. But that would be cool to see an update on that front, like where we are in terms of getting more Android apps running there, which is what they wanted to do, and bringing um, the functionality from your phone over to the system. You know, my mom, speaking of Chromebooks, my mom has fallen in love with Chromebooks. Really? Oh, she thinks it's just... She's not a power user. She's... Right check an email, she's reading news stories, whatever, and she likes you know the battery life, she likes how light it is, she likes that it just works. Mm -hmm. you know, she's a big fan of them. And I, I have to admit, I mean, if I'm just, you know, if I just need to do one thing real quick at home, I just, I grab a Chromebook and done, shut down, I'm off. Right. See, I have the window, Microsoft's version of a Chromebook, which is like their Windows 8.1 with Bing, which is really just Windows 8.1, it's fine. Um, but uh, recently, I've, it's starting to tell me that I'm running out of available memory, which is crazy. I mean, it's got, what, a gig or something on it, but hmm. you know, that's kind of frustrating because I'm just surfing the web with Spotify open. Who knows? Uh, from Sean the Man 34 I'll try not to laugh as I read the first portion of this question. Will we see a second generation Fire Phone? <laughs> <laughs> and will Amazon so. make a smartwatch? I think we'll see a second generation Fire Phone because uh, Amazon has said, look, like we'll learn from our mistakes and mm -hmm. stuff. But for me, one of the biggest, well, there were two huge mistakes. We know the pricing was off. didn't make any sense. Um, the other huge mistake is sort of the operating system. You're really limited without Google Play services. I think Amazon is, and, and I don't know how they're going to solve that. I mean, it's fine on a tablet, but when it's your phone... You're kind of relying on maps and stuff, which Amazon's, you know, it's not as great as Google Maps, so I don't know. A funny story about Fire Phone, and again, related to my family. 
So I, I Amazon had a sale on Fire Phones. I picked one up for ninety nine dollars. Yeah, I was which like, comes, oh. yeah, and then a whole year of Prime too, and all that. Yeah, I was like, oh, three. <laughs> okay, so I get it, and my father goes, "Why did you buy a, another phone? You already have two. I was like, "Well, this is a backup in case, you know, I need one." He goes, "Well, how long is that good for?" I was like, "For ever." <laughs> and he goes, "Well, how much does it cost you a month?" I was like, "Nothing." And I, it finally <laughs> dawned on me. He thought every phone immediately was contracted, like a bill. Oh, <laughs> and so he thought I was paying a monthly fee on that phone to have it just sit there. And so I had to like explain the concept of a SIM card to him. <laughs> and I was like, oh. oh man, we'd be in trouble if every phone had a contract. Yeah, I'd, oh, I've got, let's see, I've got a, a Samsung Mega 6.3 sitting at home right now, which is not running. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just sitting there turned off. Uh, I've got a blue Studio 6, you know, not doing anything. The Fire Phone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one plus one. No, the one plus one I actually carry around with. Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking. I was including them all together. Yeah, which actually will play into. Oh, oh Amazon smartwatch. Yeah, I don't know if I see it. Maybe. Um, I mean, it seems like a good way to like buy stuff, right? Especially if it's powered by the same voice engine or something that the Echo has, where you'd be like Amazon, buy me diapers or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's already available on Android Wear. I think that was one of the use cases they're using with the Apple Watch. I don't know that they need to make their own, right? Like they can just same same argument I have for why they don't need to make a phone. Yeah, I know. I... I don't know. It, it just mm. although this just crossed my mind. Okay, so let's say they did make a smartwatch. Mm -hmm. They put a low power camera in it. Then you could walk around, say your house, because they've got that that wand thing now where you can order things by scanning UPC codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you could do it with your phone. They call it Firefly, I think. I'm not. Right, well, but every app has it from Amazon. So instead of having to pull out your phone, though, you just hit a button on your watch, go like that, and you can order. That would or be. you're in a store, scan a UPC code, check the price. It, I mean, it, that would be cool. It, it'd be cool. It's, it's a stretch, but it'd be cool. It still wouldn't make it worth buying. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it depends on how well it's executed, too. But if you look at the Fire Phone, it, like, it seems to make sense because you're thinking, hey, it's another portal for people to order from Amazon. This is great. Except for it wasn't really well done, and so nobody wanted to use the phone, so it's not a portal to order from Amazon. And then they were sitting on, you know, some odd million units that weren't sold. Yeah, exactly. And that's what they probably want to avoid here. Whereas tablets are, are it's a totally different use case scenario, and, and I think they work really well, and Amazon makes good tablets. Just, I don't think a phone is needed. No, the Fire tablets were nice. I, I don't have any complaints with the Fire tablets. It's outs and, and, of course, the Kindles are great. Right. But outside of that, it's just kind of like Amazon, maybe just don't get involved with hardware or yeah, too much. You know. Yeah, the the Fire TV is kind of the... Which the, is surprising to me. I thought that would be better. I've never used one. I thought I'm it would be better, too. Use. I was, I've, I've not been impressed with it. I fire it up like once a month to see if things have changed. I'm just kind of <laughs> like... Mm. <laughs> huh. You know, and the Nexus player is a complete joke right now, but... Which is crazy, too, because when I saw that at, you know, Google had a press event in New York City, and I was like, oh, this is really neat. But I guess, you know... What we see at these events, and that's why we always, you know, got to wait for the review, is not what actually always ends up shipping. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's been many times where, you know, like we see something at CES, wow, that's awesome, and then it shows up at the office and we're like, oh. Like, whoa, what is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I saw. This wasn't quite as exciting as we thought it was. Once upon a time, uh, we used to meet with BlackBerry CEOs when I worked at Lap Laptop Magazine, and they would come in and show us their products, usually ahead of time because we had a long lead. So we'd have to, you know, take pictures and all that kind of stuff. We're writing, like, the June magazine, like, in March. So, long time. So they come in and show yeah. us the first bla uh, touchscreen Blackberries, like the Torch and stuff. Um, or, no, was it the Torch? That was the slider one. In any case... And we were like, this is amazing, but, you know, we know it's not final, and, well, you know, it'll be awesome when it launches. 
and then it launched, and it was literally like the same thing we saw that wasn't finished like months months prior. And I was like, so nothing was fixed. Yeah, when when I worked in print, I had a six to seven week lead time, which always killed me. Yeah, I was just like, by the time this gets published, nobody cares. Yeah, it's like imagine going to Techno Buffalo and reading the stories today, but then buying the magazine in two months <laughs> with the same stories. It was really difficult. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. There was one question that we kind of just touched on. There it is from Saha Raja. What is your daily driver for your smartwatch, phone, and tablet? Hmm. But what are your current daily drivers? Right now I'm using the iPhone 6 Plus and the Nexus 6. And uh, for smartwatch, I actually don't usually wear a smartwatch. I wear my regular watch. But if I'm wearing on Moto 360 and tablet... Right now, I've been. If I'm using a tablet, it's the uh, Nvidia Shield tablet. I still really like that thing. I'm uh, currently using just a regular Pebble and iPhone six plus and one plus one for phones, and iPad Air two for tablet. Or no, I'm sorry, not iPad Air two. I don't know why I said that. iPad Air. <laughs> the first one. We yeah, both the ordered one. the time. The Pebble Time as well. Yeah. So oh yeah, I, I can't wait to try out the Pebble Time. Yeah. Uh, from Sean the Man thirty four, how's Apple Pay? Months later, are you still using it? I don't use it as much as I would like to, simply because where I live, there's like a Walgreens that accepts it, <laughs> um, and I hardly ever go to Walgreens. But whenever I've had a chance to use it, I use it. I think it's great. I have to be honest, I get nervous now because I had that one instance where like it wasn't registering my fingerprint and there was a line behind me and I'm like, eh, here's my card. But yeah. I always, and you know, if you read the site and listen to the podcast, I've always said like I really, really want to and I was always looking forward to using my phone for payments. It's just, I don't know, now, <laughs> now that I can, I'm like, oh. Uh. Except for at Starbucks, you know, I don't use Apple Pay, but I use like the little scan code because it's flawless. I, I use, whenever I'm at out in Irvine, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the week at a time or whatever, I that's the only way I buy things at Starbucks. That's yeah, great. That thing is so freaking easy to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 scan. I mean, it's so easy that they, like, don't even scan it anymore. They just leave the scanner there and I have to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, I, well, quite often they'll, like, you know, say go ahead and they turn around to, you know, right. I, I am the most boring Starbucks customer ever. I just get a you know, a Pike, Pike Place, yeah. Pike Place, no Pike room for cream. <laughs> I drink my coffee black. I don't do anything fancy to it. I just drink black coffee. Right. And, and they just turn around. I, you know, boop. They turn around, hand me my cup, and that's it. I'm done. I'm out. Nice. <laughs> but <laughs> as for Apple Pay, I use it when I can, which huh. is not that often. I should use it more. Maybe I'll, you know, get some cojones. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the Apple Watch for a moment, how many Apple from Sean the Man thirty four? How many Apple watches do you think will be sold in the first year? I'm hearing estimates from analysts from three million to twenty one million. Any guesses? Yeah, I mean the ranges we've heard are insane. Yeah, I think people are like, well, it's gonna sell a little bit, or people are like super bullish because they're like, this is the next iPhone, this is the next iPad, this is gonna go nuts. So I have no idea. Honestly, I'm, like we were saying. If you look at the competitors, there's not a whole lot of attraction. So let's see what happens. I I'm I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna say under five million. Okay. Probably around four point five. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, we do have to consider it's a huge global launch too. It's not everywhere immediately, but it's a, it's a large global launch, which is I think going to get products in people's hands quicker than else. I mean, other uh, devices. So anyone that wants to write that down and remind me at the end of the year show, because mm -hmm. I know I won't remember I said it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see if I am correct. Uh, also from Sean the Man thirty four, and this is funny just because uh, the email John sent out yesterday. Uh, did you guys have a March Madness bracket? If so, who's your final four? Um, Actually, John Rettinger just emailed the entire company yesterday, and he had set up an online place for us to set up brackets, and I know absolutely nothing about college basketball. <laughs> I have mine. 
Um, I don't remember who I put in the Final Four. I have Arizona and Villanova going against it and Arizona winning, which is probably not going to happen because I went to Lehigh in Pennsylvania, watched him play Villanova recently. It was a close game. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't think Villanova's going to go that far, but, you know, kind of rooting for my Pennsylvania team, and then uh, I grew up in Arizona too. So. Yep. So, uh, sure. Sure. What Todd said. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't listen to me. It's probably a terrible bracket. <laughs> But you never. Every year there's upsets. It's fun. All I know is Manchester City's out of the Champions League. Yeah. Yeah, I actually saw part of that game. It was yesterday, right? Against yep. Barcelona. Yep. I saw that. Yep. Barcelona knocked. Even though I have no dog in this fight, anytime City loses, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else have we got here? Uh, from, and since Todd, you have touched this phone, uh, from Eamon... Dude, I'm not even going to try. I'm sorry. I, there's too many little symbols in there. Um, <laughs> what do you think about the Samsung Galaxy S6 design? I like it a lot. Um, I think Samsung... Well, we met with Samsung, and they said, look, it really was called like Project Zero inside, and they gave the designers like free reign. They said, build a phone you know, out of the materials you want. Let's see what happens. And they built this phone out of aluminum. I think it looks you know, very much like an iPhone. In, in terms of, like, the actual metal borders. For better or worse, I think it's fine. Um, and then I like the, I really like the glass on both sides. I think it's a really nice device. The only thing that bothers me, and I told Samsung this too, is it gets fingerprints like crazy, especially on the back panel. Yeah, I, I think too many phones have that problem. But yeah. The thing is, I, though, Note, Note 4 was a great step forward with the sort of the metal edges, and then this is just, like, Boom. Like, all right, you got it. Like, no more plastic. I think, you know, I, I know consumers are a little upset about the replaceable battery, micro SD card, and obviously micro SD is still possible. HTC does it in its own phones. But, you know, I think this is a step in the right direction for Samsung. Hey, I'm excited to try it. I, you know, I, but I'm excited to try every phone that comes out. Uh, from Robbie Kaya, I believe. Uh, thoughts on Asus Transformer Book T100 Chi? Can it replace my laptop and iPad altogether? I have not had a chance to try this. Right, I saw it briefly. Um, I think it's neat. We're gonna. I think we actually. I don't know if we have it in the office yet, or if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <But> <laughs> we'll have coverage of it. Um, <laughs> I don't. I think it. It depends what you use as for a laptop. Um, if you're replacing like a netbook, like I use, yeah, I think so. Um, Asus has done a really good job of that with their transformers in the past. Keyboards are usually pretty good. Love that it provides you know additional battery life to the display. Um, it does work pretty well to replace them both, but it depends what kind of computer you're coming from. I mean, you can't go from like, you know, I, I wouldn't even go from a MacBook Air in that and say that it's completely replacing it because you're still going to miss stuff. But they yeah. do a good job. Uh, from Sean the Man 34, with Apple coming out with a music subscription service, do you think we will see a movie slash TV show subscription later, almost like a Netflix Hulu? Well, that's the rumor, but it sounds like it's going to be more like Sling TV than on-demand streaming. Right. Um, will they go that route? That is a route that's a lot more complicated than a lot of people realize. Uh, you know, each month we run an article about what movies are coming and going from Netflix. Mm -hmm. And that is all because when Netflix agrees to carry a movie, they agree to it for a set period of time at a certain rate. So you have to keep renegotiating. Because, I mean, sometimes you'll see a movie drop off and then come back like two months later. Right. And it's just, it's all a matter of negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Apple could probably do it. Do they want to do it? I don't know. They could buy Sling, too. <laughs> well, Sling is actually Dish. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah, so I, I don't see... Oh, man, that's a route Apple doesn't want to go. Right, right. No, it, do, it doesn't want <laughs> to go down that route. No. Unless, well, unless Dish sells it. But I don't think it will. <laughs> I, I don't know what Apple's end game is here. It's... I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch. Seems know, possible, especially if, I mean, they did it with Beats, or they're doing it again with Beats. All I know is there better be an updated Apple TV at some point. <laughs> I know. Brief. 
Uh, from Sasha Bahal, what do you think of the OnePlus teaser hashtag one game changer? Is it a OnePlus gaming device? It's a controller. Yeah, it looks like a controller. Maybe like a Bluetooth controller. I don't Which know if it's going to be this crazy. I mean, OnePlus is like a bootstrapped company that's making nothing off of its phones. Barely anything. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be aggressive and, and put money into developing a new product. Certainly not a new device, I don't think, like that. Yeah, I'm. I bet it's like a, a, like a white Bluetooth controller. I don't know, <laughs> like something simple. I don't know. It, it, odd, odd teaser. I mean, for a company like you said that's bootstrapped and all that, it it doesn't seem like a, a market that they need to be jumping into. Yeah, and and we know it's a careful company. So yeah, I, I mean, like, it didn't release the back covers because it ended up being like, a little more expensive or whatever. I mean, not widely released. So I don't think it's going to take, like, this huge jump into, like, a gaming device. I could be wrong. It doesn't seem like a good business move. I agree. I don't know. Very odd. Uh, from Sasha and Bahal as well, have any of you guys tried the Windows 10 preview? I have not. Yeah, I have it running right, actually, right in front of this computer. <laughs> <laughs> Windows on my uh, desktop. It's good. I didn't install the new one yet. The update that came out yesterday, it adds, like, uh, different lock screen things, uh, Cortana for different languages. They, they said they polished the start menu. So I didn't really jump on it, but... Uh, the, the Windows 10 preview has been great for me. The only problem I've had a, a couple times is, like, in Chrome especially, the browser just doesn't load anything. So it could be anything. It might be Windows 10. It might be my computer. I don't know. Something else. Oh, that, it's been I, really stable. I, I look forward to trying Windows 10 at some point. I just... I, I My computers are too precious to me to run unstable software, I, I just don't have the time, unfortunately. Yeah, for me, I don't know, ever since, like, maybe it was Windows ME, maybe before that, which was stupid. I've just installed all the early previews, so. Windows ME, wow. Millennium Edition? Mm-hmm. 2000? <laughs> I had one computer with it, yes, so I remember it. <laughs> it was kind of like the... Oh, darn it. Windows XP is taking too long to make. Let's rush something out the door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, good grief. From Mel Gaming. Man, that thing was horrible. Uh, do you think Samsung is going to update the gear live or make another Android Wear smartwatch? Well, that's a good question. Both. I think they're, they're going to do something with Tizen because they've already sort of invested millions in lots of time into Tizen. They finally launched a smartwatch, and they brought their other devices onto Tizen uh, after the matter. But I think they'll probably do Android Wear, too. I don't think they're going to rule it out forever. I don't know. I, I think I do know we didn't see the smartwatch at Mobile World Congress, and that suggests that they're doing something different. Yeah. No, I agree with you. They've invested way <coughs> too much in Tizen to not continue with it. Yeah. You know, I really liked the... Um, what was it? LG's new smartwatch. All these devices have so many names I can't keep. Urbane. The uh, Urbane LTE has WebOS power, which is very much like the Audi watch that LG had at CES. Now that's cool. So I'd like to see Samsung get into that kind of market. From Dennis Langston, anything new on the LG G Note? Yeah, nothing yet. We just saw rumors. Um, I think the latest one was what a 5.6 inch display, something like that. And that you know, they trademarked the name. Maybe we'll see it later this year, this summer. But the rumor is that they're going to have the G4 and then follow that with something to compete against Samsung's Note family. So. I don't know. I, I, I still think it's uh, odd that they went with the Note name, but... Yeah. How did they all get away with this? Like, Show Me had one, too, the Mi Note 4. Because uh, I think you can't trademark the word Note. Really? Yeah. <laughs> There are certain words that can't be trademarked. You know, you can trademark it in conjunction with another word. Right, like G-Note or Galaxy Note. Right, exactly. But the word Note, you can't do anything with. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you good. cannot trademark common words. Hmm. Which is what made the whole Candy Crush Saga thing so bizarre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that yeah, for those that don't remember when they got the the king got the trademark on Candy Crush Saga, they went after any game that had the word Saga in its name, including like the Banner song, Saga, right? Which was completely unrelated. Yeah, but they said there could be confusion in the marketplace, hmm. and they finally dropped that trademark claim. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. That that was so stupid. Oh my goodness! Uh, from Pierre Bullier, uh, what would you like to see on the One Plus Two? I honestly, you know, we've been asked this before, and I keep thinking about it. I really, really still like the One Plus One. I don't know what I would change. Really? See, I wasn't. Maybe my unit was like not as great. I gave it to my brother. I don't know. It's like the display to me wasn't very good. It's like it's way too bright. You know, the backlight and stuff, and it like not too bright as in the sense like the colors, but like the balance, like it doesn't have real dark blacks like an OLED display. I'd like to see that on it. Resolution's <laughs> fine. I mean, let's go up to Quad HD if they can, but I, I think the price is more important. That's what makes it so exciting. I, I will say this: for whatever reason, I have a horrible tendency to accidentally turn on the flashlight. <laughs> really? I'll like, just be like, the flashlight, huh? yeah, I, I'm like, why is my battery drain? Oh, the flashlight's been on for probably an huh. hour. Uh, yeah, my battery life wasn't very good on my unit, so. I, I've been lucky, I guess. I, yeah. Well, but I, I would agree with you, a better screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. I, I wasn't crazy about the camera. But. See, I'm not a big picture taker with phones, so though. I mean, no. I'm like, oh, I'll tweet something, snap, that's the extent of my. Right, you're like, oh, okay. Yep. I, I That's. I'm done after Wireless that. charging would be neat. Yeah. I, Not to be neat. Know, my, I'm just thinking of fun things. Like oh, it. no, no, oh, no, I totally agree. Um, wireless charging still worries me. I mean, until we get... I, I think, you know, QI is going to win or however you... K, K, QI, G. however you want to say it. <laughs> um, I think it's going to end up winning, but I just want to be sure it's going to win before well, I start Well, they're partners now. That's like the... Um, they're, yeah. That's why they're both in the the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, which is neat. So, but yeah, you need a device that supports both, right? Yep. Uh, and we'll take one more question, then we'll be done for this week. By the way, we will be back on Thursday again next week due to uh, scheduling issues, but. We will be around next week on Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, final question comes from Ravi Kahai, I think. <laughs> what kind of feature do you think should be added to future smartwatch mm -hmm. to make more customers start considering to purchase one, except battery life, that is? Yeah, battery life is the thing. <laughs> I think that's a lot of it. I mean, if the Apple Watch, you know, if Tim Cook had come out on stage and said, you know, I'm giving you this great color screen and all these features and the battery lasts, say, even four days. Mm -hmm. I'd be going, ooh, I'm intrigued. And the fact that I've got yet a, a, you know, the thing, yes, we charge all our phones every night. But the thing is, I don't want to charge yet another device every night. And a device that is not as essential as a phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true. I Not only do I not want to, I don't. And then I don't wear it. And so that's one of the big barriers they, that all of these companies have to get over, except for maybe Pebble, is... Yeah. I mean, I know you're saying accept battery life, but I really think that's the huge barrier. And, you know, maybe price. Yeah. The Apple Watch. Like, they have, to, they have to have, you know, if you, go to, if you go to a Macy's or whatever, you go to a department store and you want to buy a new watch, there's a lot of nice-looking watches you can choose from, you know, from, like, 50 bucks up. Like, it look, you know, I wear it, you know, wherever. I don't think that's the same case with wearables. They sort of start at 100 bucks, and most of them look like something you wear to the gym. So I think that's a barrier, too. Yeah. And maybe Apple fixes that a little bit. Maybe Motorola fixes that a little bit with the high-end Moto 360s and stuff. Um, but that's still what the Moto 360 with the metal band is, you know, 300 bucks. So that's a barrier for a lot of people that don't see any need for these things. Nope, I totally agree. 
Well, that is going to bring this week's episode to a close. As always, we appreciate you joining us. You can find us on the iTunes store by searching for the Techno Buffalo Show, where we do appreciate if you rate and review us. That does help out the show. You can also find us on Pocket Cast. You can subscribe via RSS feed, and you can find us on the Stitcher app, which means you can listen to us anytime, anywhere. Anywhere there are podcasts, you can find the Techno Buffalo Show. Until next week, I'm Sean Onney. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Techno Buffalo. I have been joined by Deputy Managing Editor Todd Hazelton. Bye, everybody. Until next week, we'll see you then. Take it easy. Bye-bye.